When the pandemic hit, the world of sports took a time out. Sports facilities shut down during the circuit breaker from April to June. One year on, Singapore is in phase three of its reopening. Some mass sporting activities resumed with new safety protocols in place. So we look at the numbers that go into the event, we look at the, the cohorts, which is the amount of people that can be grouped together, we look at the facilities they will use, things like washrooms, <laughs> toilets is very important, um, and then we'll look at the entrances as they come through, the timing. Up to 250 participants are now allowed at mass sports events. From April 24th, up to 750 fans will be allowed into events if there's prior testing. So pre-COVID, the, the number one revenue generator was really mass participation. For a lot of the national sports associations, and particularly for the private sector, being able to host those large events with you know, 3,000, 10,000, 20,000 participants present um, is really their largest source of income. And in many cases, that can be their single largest source of income for the entire financial year that has just disappeared. But the sports sector wasn't just hit by the loss of audience numbers and revenue. Around the world, athletes have been grounded by COVID-19 border restrictions. We're not quite at the stage yet where we can bring over some of the fantastic events we've had in the past, such as you know, Manchester United playing here, or Scotland playing rugby here, or Juventus or other Italian football teams. So really, that's the next stage for us. A key part of that next stage will be managing the inflow of sports talent from overseas. First to enter the ring, the one championship event at the Singapore Indoor Stadium. What happens is, is, is athletes, before they travel, 24 hours before they travel, they get tested. When they land, they get tested again. And then during their whole stay, they get tested. But in that whole stay, they are in a bubble. So the minute they get into Changi Airport, they get escorted into a hotel in which is a, it's a bubble and no one's allowed to leave. And that bubble is also connected to Singapore Inter Stadium. So there's a direct transportation between the stadium. But again, then after the events happen, then they get tested again. As long as those tests are cleared, then they're shipped off back home. The Football Association of Singapore is also looking to bring in foreign players using a bubble system for the AFC Cup in June. It's also looking forward to local players being able to take part in international events again. That's always been our challenge, especially for the international teams, uh, our Lions, our women's national team. We have uh, continental or regional competitions that our clubs play, uh, which typically needs them to need them to travel and stuff. And obviously right now it is a bit of a challenge, especially this year, which is a huge year for both our men's and women's team. We have the Sea Games as well. Though travel remains restricted, there are no conventional geographical borders online. So like many other business sectors, the sports industry pivoted online, accelerating a trend that had already started before the coronavirus. For one champion strategy is we are a content producer. That's the biggest driver. So broadcasters around the world paying one champion for its content, and that has not changed at all. And um, for 2020, we actually, our TV viewership numbers were up almost 50% as compared to 2019, despite the fact that we we're down for three months. Uh, and on top of it, our social and digital uh, online metrics, viewership numbers were actually up 300% for 2020 as compared to 2019, again, only on nine months of actual live events. But some industry experts warn that the new digital normal could affect conventional revenue models. So as we've moved more and more digital, what we are seeing is that people are expecting the content for free for the most part. Um, and so this will present a more challenging model in the long term. Most people do want to still physically attend an event, but will they expect that after getting it for free digitally before, that they will have to pay for it afterwards. And in the longer term, the challenge will be convincing people that they should continue to pay what are relatively high um, rates for tickets. Stakeholders hope that the effort they put in during the shutdown to continue engaging their customers will pay off when action kicks off again. Well, you become a fan by watching it on TV or social digital. Then when the event comes to your city, you buy the tickets to go by. So the most important thing for sports properties is that their broadcast of live content or post-produced content is continuously you know, um, 
on a regular schedule so fans can interact with our heroes and, and, and our events. Despite offering all matches online for free, the Football Association of Singapore is confident that their fans will purchase tickets to a live match. We do not foresee that because we are so much more, uh, so much embracing of the, the, the new norms now on digital that we will see a lack of numbers live. We have to get the fans back onto the seat. It will obviously be in a different form, perhaps uh, with social distancing, perhaps they wouldn't be able to cheer too loudly. But at the end of the day, football games, uh, when it's played with fans, it brings about a new dimension and experience, not just for the fans, but also for the players themselves. Because Singapore is chosen as a choice by destination because it brings in other visitors regionally. People know they can host here within the sports hub or within Singapore and people will fly and come and join. So for us, it's really important that we get back to those higher numbers.